the things I really stress in the book is understanding the history of this music. Because we've always got to understand that maraca too and any other style of music is not just a rhythm. It's, there's a whole culture involved in this. And so the history of maraca too is very important to understand while we're learning the, the rhythms. Uh, maraca too evolved approximately 400 years ago when the African slaves were brought to the northeastern region of Brazil they formed uh, nations in the city of Recife. They formed groups that they called nations. And in those nations, they would have election ceremonies where the slaves would elect one of the members to be the king, the king of their nation. So after they had this election ceremony and they elected one of their members to be the king, they would have a huge celebration. At that celebration is where they sang songs, uh, they danced, and they played drums. And it was out of those celebrations that this music that we call Maraca II evolved out of. Um, and I like to compare this to the Congo Square meetings in New Orleans, um, where the slaves in Congo Square would meet every Sunday and play their drums and sing songs and sing their chants. So it's very similar. The, the, the origins of Maraca II is very similar to the origins of the New Orleans Second Line which we'll be talking about in the book and in these video lessons. So always remember to check out the history because it's just going to give you a lot more depth of knowledge of the music that you're playing and it's going to help your approach to this music. Welcome to Maraca 2 New York in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we've been conducting these classes for the past 10 years and in these classes we've been exploring all the traditional Maraca 2 rhythms from the northeast of Brazil. Uh, everything that you're going to see in these videos are in the book, Maraca 2 for Drum Set and Percussion. So we're going to be giving you a little bit of a taste of what you'll be exploring in the book and also on the audio CD. First, I'd like to introduce uh, one of the co-authors, Aaron Schaefer Hayes, who's playing the Alfaya drum here. And the other co-author is Michele Nascimento. She wrote all the historical information in the book. Uh, a lot of this information is, is the first time that it's ever been published in English. So, and, and it's also very hard to find this inf information on the internet because all of this tradition, the Maraca II tradition, is all oral. It's all been passed down orally for, for approximately 400 years. So all of the information that we're sharing with you today and in the book is uh, the first time it's been published in English. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. And if you're ever in Brooklyn, come join us in the class. The first instrument that I want to introduce is the kaisha, or what we call the snare drum. The kaisha has a lot of different variations, and there, it's, it's virtually impossible to nail down one single kaisha pattern, because uh, each maraca two group has its own unique variation or interpretation of how they play it. Again, talking about that swingometer, where we, we can spin that dial down to New Orleans and we can spin it and where it's straight or we can spin it down to Brazil. That's what we're going to be. We're going to be talking about that swing feel all day today. Um, but it's very important to keep in mind that each traditional Maraca 2 group has their own degree of that swing. Okay, so Jeff is going to show you the basic Maraca 2 Kaisha pattern, which is right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. That's based on the traditional Maraca 2 group called Nação Estrela Brilhante. So, Jeff, show us the Kaisha pattern, please. So, as you can see, Jeff was playing that straight, so our dial was right in the middle. Now, let's spin that dial down to Brazil a little bit and, and put a little more swing feel on it. Okay, now we've got Aaron Schaefer Hayes and Michelle Nascimento. They're playing this drum that's called Alfi the Alfaya. It's also called the Bombo or the Tambor, depending on who you talk to in Brazil. Uh, the most popular name is called Alfaya. It's traditionally made out of a hollow tree trunk or a barrel, uh, what they would carry wine or whiskey in. Uh, they would take the barrel and put skin, goat skin over it, and rope tune it. Uh, they also sometimes take a Macaiba tree 
and cut it down and hollow it out. These are regular uh, like plywood drums that's made by a very famous drum maker in, in Hisifi named Aureliano. So they're going to play a rhythm for you, the basic, one of the most basic maracatu rhythms called Baki di Marcação. Baki di Marcação has a lot of variations, uh, a lot of different ways of playing it. The most important thing to take out of this is, are the accents um, on doom, da doom, da doom, doom, da doom, da doom, doom. You notice the left hand, when they play the left hand is just playing a ghost note and the right hand is always playing the accents. So let's show them Baki de Marcasson. Nice. At the end, you see that they ended with the bridge. We talk about that in the drum set section. In the traditional maracatu groups, they call that the convention or the convention. The bridge is something that the maracatu groups use to bridge two gaps, two, two parts of a song together, so the A section or the B section. Sometimes it's also just used as a rhythmic cadence to end a section or to move on to a next part of an arrangement. Let's move on now and I would like to introduce to you Vivian Warfield and Linda Tashell. They're playing what most of us call or know as the Shekere. In Maracatu and in Hisifi, they call this the Abe. Um, it wasn't a traditional Maracatu instrument until the mid 1990s when Mestre Walter from Estrella Brilanchi started using this instrument in, the traditional, in his traditional Maracatu group. So uh, Linda and Vivian are going to show us a really basic Maracatu Abe pattern. This instrument here is called the Minero in Maracatu. Some people call this Ganza, depending on which region of Brazil you go to, but in Maracatu they call it Minero. This was the pre predecessor of the Abe uh, in terms of shaker instruments in Maracatu. This has been considered the traditional sh instrument in Maracatu for many years. And it's got a very u unique technique. Um, one of the ways of playing the Minero in Maracatu is like this. Okay. So as you can see, the, the swing feel is very strong in the ganza or the minero. Uh, it's, it's the same swing feel as what the kaisha is playing. It's got that, that lope to it. This is very important in, in maraca too. The feel of this instrument is basically what sets that whole, that whole groove and that whole swing feel for maraca too. Um, each group, each traditional maraca too group has their own unique way of playing this instrument. Some maraca too groups don't even use this instrument, but most of them do. Minero. People, most people consider the most important instrument. This is the gongue, and this is kind of the clave of maraca too. This instrument is the glue that holds together all of the Marac all of the Maracatu drummers. Um, and sometimes in a Maracatu group, remember, there can be up to 150 drummers, sometimes more. There's usually only one to three gongue players, depending on the Maracatu group. The most basic Maracatu gongue pattern is, is this. One, two, three, and... Okay, so that's, that's one of the most basic standard clave patterns in maracatu. The gongue player in a maracatu group has a lot of freedom 
to play a lot of variations around that clave pattern. Their, their job is to not only keep the drummers together, but to also c continuously instill energy in the Maraca 2 group. So you'll see in a parade sometimes, the minute you see those drummers start to kind of get a little saggy, all of a sudden that gongay player will just come in. And all of a sudden everybody just kind of wakes up and starts playing again. So one of the variations that you can look at on the gongay pattern is what's oftentimes mistaken, mistakenly known as the agogo pattern, which is this. Okay, so you can see in there there's a lot of variations and, and the most important variation to pick out of that was that agogo thing, the dun ta dun ta tu ta ta dun ta. Because the agogo bell is not a traditional maraca 2 instrument, uh, it's always, that pattern is always played on the gongue, but a lot of non-traditional maraca 2 groups have adapted that rhythmic pattern and placed it on the agogo bell. Um, so that's a very uh, interesting piece of information that, that uh, is important to know and it's in the book and there's a lot more gongue variations in the book as well as abe variations and, mi and minero variations that you can check out in the book. So now let's put all the pieces together. Cool. So this rhythm, <coughs> the rhythm that we're playing is called Baki di Makasong. A lot of other Maraca 2 groups also call this Baki di Luanda. Luanda is the capital of Angola. Um, so we're going to put all the pieces together, all the instruments we just showed you, and we're going to play Baki di Makasong, okay? Or Baki, Baki di Luanda. <laughs> One, two, three, 